guys, my name is Lily and today I want to show you what's the best and cheapest way to run your freezer in a blackout situation. And actually today I have gotten a new freezer, this one here. It just arrived today and this was the old freezer, which is a great device actually. So it's really energy efficient and it served as well, but it was just too small for our demands. And this is why now we have gotten a bigger freezer. Also, I am expecting to get some deer meat from a local hunter and this is why I had to buy this bigger freezer so we can fit all the meat inside. So today I want to show you the cheapest and best and also simplest way how you can run your uh, freezers in a blackout situation. Alright, so today we want to run our freezer off of a battery and we want to connect it to an inverter. Now it's really important that you are using a pure sine wave inverter because um, you can damage your refrigerator or your freezer if you are using something of less quality. So what I have here is a pure sine wave inverter and also you need to take a look at the voltage of the inverter. Um, for example this freezer here has a power surge of about 650 to 750 watts. So it's drawing this high current just for a few like milliseconds and then it's going back down to 36 to 45 watts. I think that this power inverter might be enough. So here we have a 500 watts inverter with a surge power of 1000 watts. So if the surge power of this freezer is not going beyond that it should be okay and big enough to power the freezer. Also here you can read that it's a pure sine wave inverter. So yeah, uh, this is the inverter that I want to try first. I want to try the smallest one that I have and if this is not working I'm going to use the next bigger size. Anyway, before we can try the inverter we first have to discuss some batteries. Okay guys, so now I want to show you some batteries which you can use for this project. So here we have a cheap HEM uh, LED battery and this one here is a little bit more expensive lithium iron phosphate battery and this is by the company Renogy. Now the HEM battery is very common in caravans and it serves its purpose but it's not perfect. So first of all it's really heavy. Ah, I can barely lift it up. I mean I can but um, the lithium iron phosphate battery is much more lightweight. So here we have 12.8 volts with 100 amperes and here we have 12 volts with 100 amperes. So now we have uh, 1280 watt hours here and 1200 watt hours here. So it's almost similar but the thing is um, that with HEM batteries like this one here you can only use like 50% of the ampere hours. In this case it's 50 ampere hours that you can use. Otherwise if you're using more than this, like if you um, discharge the battery down to 0% then it will immediately like shorten the life of the battery. So you will get the most lifetime, the most cycles out of this HM battery if you let it run between 100% and 50%. And if you do that, you will get about 500 cycles out of this battery, which is actually not too long. And then you have to buy a new battery again. Now the Life Power 4 battery, which we have here, is a lot better when it comes to the depth of discharge and also to the life cycles. So here you have 2000 life cycles it's going to hold five years minimum. Also what this battery here has is a integrated BMS system. So if you discharge it lower than 10 volts, it's going to shut off the battery to conserve the battery. But it's even better to shut it off at a little bit higher voltage to make sure that you get all of the 2000 life cycles out of your battery. So this is definitely the better choice when it comes to transportability and also to life cycles. But what about temperature? Now when it comes to temperature, lithium iron phosphate batteries, they should not be um, charged under zero degrees Celsius. 
So when it's freezing, you should not charge this battery anymore. But with this battery here, it's no problem. You can charge this battery far below freezing, far below zero degrees Celsius, and it's no problem. So if you want to store the batteries outside, then the HEM battery is the better choice. But as long as you have a heated room, for example, here in my basement, it never gets below 15 degrees Celsius, even when the heating is not working. The earth starts here and this basement is very dry, but also it's super warm. So in this condition, I would rather choose a LifePo 4 battery because it never goes down to freezing temperatures. Now the charging is uh, limited to zero degrees Celsius and the BMS will shut off the battery if the temperature goes lower. But when it comes to discharging, you can still use the LifePo 4 batteries down to minus 20 degrees Celsius, which is really cold, okay? And below minus 20 degrees Celsius, it's going to shut off the battery again and protect the battery. Okay, I want to give you a closer look on the batteries that I'm using. So this is a typically HEM battery. And here we have this really awesome battery by the company Renogy. I'm a real fan of it. Um, it has very good ratings everywhere. It's high quality build. Even the inside of the battery, it's very high quality and professionally built. It has a Bluetooth function, so you can connect it to your phone, for example. Uh, let's read what it says up here. So the maximum charge current is 50 amperes. So you can recharge the battery in two hours. And also the maximum discharge current is 100 amperes. So 100 amperes discharge current means that you can um, use a device that needs 1280 watts. So that's the maximum that you get out of this battery. Also, you have to watch out that you don't put this outside directly in the sun in summertime. So you should not expose it to more than 50 degrees Celsius. So this is the manual of the Renogy battery. It's always good to read through it. Also here it says that you should not connect more than eight batteries in parallel. And the only negative thing about this battery is that you cannot connect it in series. So first I thought that I will use it for my 24 volt solar system, which I have right here. But yeah, unfortunately I cannot use this battery for it because I cannot put it into a series. So I will have to get a different battery for that uh, project. But actually for my camper van, I need exactly a battery like this because in my camper van, I have a 12 volt system and you can easily take two batteries and put them in parallel and then you will still have 12 volts. Now the really cool thing about the Renogy battery here is that um, it comes in a shelf mode and you can wake it up from the shelf mode with drawing more than one amps and then you can charge and discharge the battery normally but when you're not using the battery anymore, it puts itself again into the shelf mode and it can hold the charge for a longer time. So that's a really great feature of this battery and it will definitely uh, prolong the life of the battery itself. Now, the next amazing thing about this Renogy battery is that it has a really reliable battery management system with all kinds of functions, over voltage uh, protection, under voltage protection, high temperature protection, low temperature protection, and everything for discharge and charge, overcurrent protection and discharge protection, and also, last but not least, short circuit protection. The weight of the Renogy lithium iron phosphate uh, battery is only 13 kilograms so that's really lightweight okay now i want to see if i can connect to the battery using my phone so i want to install the renogy dc home app and you can see it is fully charged 100 percent we have 100 amp hours the voltage that we have right now is 13.4 volts and it's 19 degrees celsius inside of the battery so i think that's really awesome uh, that you can connect to your battery like this then you don't need an additional battery monitor anymore. And yeah, that's really awesome. I really like how they have made this great app. Okay, now I want to do a quick calculation on how thick the cables of the inverter have going to be. Now, uh, the cables that came with the inverter 
uh, six square millimeters. Six square millimeters is in between eight and ten gauge. So let's say it's nine gauge. Uh, with nine gauge or eight gauge, or let's say ten gauge, something in between here, I can run loads with thirty-five amps. Okay, thirty-five amps, thirty-five times 12.8 that's the voltage of the battery so we can run devices which draw no more than 448 watts now my freezer is not drawing that much it only is drawing 71.8 watts so for this project the six square millimeter cables are fine but if you want to like use higher loads um, then you need to switch to a thicker cable. So always make sure that you take a look at the wire thickness, especially for devices that draw a lot of current. Okay, I just have attached the inverter to the battery. And now as you can see, it's working because the green light is on. But is it safe to plug in my freezer like this? Or do I need to ground the inverter? Well, as you can see here, we have a grounding stud, this thing here, where it says ground. Okay, so now I'm plugging in my freezer without grounding my inverter. This is potentially hazardous and harmful, so don't do this at home. So even without grounding, the freezer is working. And that's why a lot of people think it's okay to do so, but actually you should really ground your inverter. It's really important. Especially because with freezers you're dealing with class 1 electrical devices and those are devices that need to be grounded. Okay guys, so always make sure that you ground your inverter and this will make it more safe. But is it really safe or do we need more safety measures? And actually I have dug a little bit deeper and the answer is much more complicated. So I found out that inverters like these, they are... IT systems, which means they are isolated from the ground. Um, that means that it's safe to use with appliances that are class 2 appliances, like this one here. It's a double insulated uh, drill, which does not come with a ground. Okay, So you can use these devices with this inverter with no problem. You don't have to think about a lot of things except um, that you don't want to use more than 500 watts uh, continuously. So you can safely use one, two or three um, class type two uh, items with your inverter without having to worry. And it's actually the same with all power stations. So EcoFlow, Bluetti and the other power stations, they are also operating in the IT um, system. So. These type of appliances are no problem, class 2 appliances. But when it comes to class 1 appliances, like this freezer here or microwaves, then you might have a problem and you want to have and add more security to your inverter. So the problem is that if you are attaching a freezer for example and it's faulty, then you might get away with one fault. But if you are attaching two freezers or one fridge and one microwave, two appliances of the type class 1, then if both of those devices are faulty and you're touching both of the devices, you will get an electrical shock and you might even die. So that's a real problem. So apparently if you are just using one class 1 appliance like this freezer here, you should be fine and be getting away without an RCD and breaker after the inverter. But then I found conflicting information, so another electrician who is also a YouTuber said that you should still install an RCD and breaker after the inverter if you are running a class 1 appliance. Now because of this conflicting information, I personally rather want to go the safe way. So I already ordered an RCD and a breaker and I want to make this system as safe as possible because I want to avoid all of the faults that can happen. Yeah, 
this is what I will be doing. Uh, I know that still a lot of people will just plug in the freezer into an inverter if it comes to a blackout. But I just want to let you know that there are certain dangers that come with it. And it's not as easy, it's quite a complicated matter actually. I will also link a couple of those um, electrician YouTubers into the description below. Uh, they are in German, so it's going to be hard to understand, but you can see what they are doing. And also there's one, um, I believe, British YouTuber who is explaining the IT system with inverters pretty good, much better than me. And I really urge you to watch those videos so that you know what you are dealing with. Because the answer is unfortunately much more complicated than I originally thought. Alright, so it's now 24 hours later. Um, the inverter with the 500 watts continuous power is working and the battery is now at 60.3%. So that's pretty good. I'm really happy with this battery. Renergy is a great brand and I could even run the um, freezer for two days um, without having electricity. But actually you do not really want to drain the battery to 0%, you only want to drain it to 20% and this way you will prolong the life of the battery. Alright, so if you're interested in this battery here, I will link the website into the description of this video and I really want to thank the company Renogy for sending me this battery for free, it's really awesome and I love it. Also, I want to let you know that I'm in the process of building a 12 volt solar system. It's going to be the service card here. So if you want to see how I make myself a complete 12 volt solar system, then make sure that you're subscribing to my channel. Stay tuned till next time.